I'm Aaron Gold and I am frustrated. Frustrated, I tell you, because Buick makes all these fantastic cars and people won't even consider them because they are Buicks. Well, this is the newest one. It's the 2016 Cascada. It's their new convertible and it is really terrific. And I'm gonna show you why. Now, the first thing I wanna point out to you is that. That is a fender-mounted turn signal repeater, and it is a sure sign that you are driving a European car. And that's the secret behind the Buick Cascada. It was actually developed by Opel, which is General Motors' European division. Now, they made a lot of changes to make it more Buick-like. It's got a much nicer interior. They've made the ride a lot more compliant, but the bones of this car are German, and it drives accordingly. Under the hood is something kind of nifty because I don't think you'll find this engine in any other General Motors product, at least not one sold in this country. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. Let's pull the shroud off and get a proper look at it. Direct fuel injection. There's the turbocharger right there. Now the output of this engine is 200 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque. And those numbers might sound familiar because that's roughly the output of the previous generation Volkswagen GTI. But the GTI did it with uh, two liters. The Buick requires only 1.6. EPA fuel economy, 20 miles per gallon city, 27 highway. We've been cruising around the Florida Keys. See how I got that in there? We've been cruising around the Keys at nice gentle speeds. We've been averaging around 28 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. Keep in mind, however, Buick recommends premium fuel and you'll need that to get maximum power and the best possible fuel economy. The interior is a mix of good and bad. Mostly good. I really like the interiors. The seats are very comfortable. I'm a big fan of this uh, contrast color stitching, which uh, adds a lot of character to this otherwise very dark dash. The downside is this, okay? That is an awful lot of buttons, and it's very hard to find the one that you want to use while you're driving the car. The car comes with a seven inch color touchscreen. It's the Buick IntelliLink system. Not as nice an interface as my link on the newer uh, General Motors vehicles that you'll find on the Chevys and the GMCs. I'd really like to see them update that. Um, I have to say, I should note that every GM car has OnStar right in the mirror. This is a fantastic feature because if you get into a crash, it will call for help, and if you can't answer, it can use a GPS system in the car to figure out where where you are and send help right to you. Let's take a look at the back seat. Now here's something kind of cool. When you put the seat forward, it motors itself out of the way. Sit down and the seat comes back. And apparently if you're tall, see, it'll stop and won't kill your legs. I really like that. Um, no convertible in this class really has a very good back seat. So as long as you're not picky about knee and leg room, this one's really not too awful. Now you'll notice that I'm sharing the back seat with a suitcase and that's because there is very little trunk space in this car. When you have the top down, you've got just 9.8 cubic feet of space and that's mostly because of this piece here, which is necessary to lower the convertible top. Once you put the top up, um, you can uh, move this out of the way and you'll have 13.4 cubic feet of space, which is not too bad. You can also lower the seats using this little electric switch right here gives you enough space, they say, for a golf bag. By the way, check these out. So these tail lights, this is a European thing that in case you break down on the side of the motorway, you have to be able to see the hazard lights on the car. So you have an extra set of tail lights, which is bound to make you a hit with the girls. And one of the biggest concerns in a convertible is torsional rigidity. Because when you remove the steel roof from a car, it loses a lot of its stiffness. And you know how bad it is to lose your stiffness. When you're riding in a convertible, you can often feel the car twisting and shaking. That's bad engineering. But one of the advantages that the Cascada has is it was designed from the get-go to be a convertible. So it has these big, beefy side sills. They've uh, strengthened the structure between the back seat and the trunk. And they put bracing underneath the chassis. And that eliminates pretty much all traces of twist or cowl shake. That also means they were able to engineer it for a softer, more compliant, and quieter ride, which is what a Buick ought to be. There's a lot of actually really good engineering touches on this car. Okay, for one thing, you can raise and lower the convertible roof at speeds up to 31 miles per hour. That's very handy if it starts to rain or something like that. You don't have to find a dry place to pull over. You can just slow down a bit and raise or lower the roof. Although why you'd want to lower the roof in the rain, 
is beyond me. I'm really impressed by this thing. It's German engineered, it's wonderful to drive, it's got a really nicely done interior. It's a very satisfying convertible. And if you avoid it because it's a Buick, you'd be missing out. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Gold, and I'll see you next time.